swampy salutations, friends. We are on the edges of the Debbie storm that's coming through. So it's a very rainy, dreary day today. So I thought maybe it was a good time for a vlog update. <laughs> um, we just got back from a trip to Alaska, which was very cool. Um, it was a lot. We got caught up in the crowd strike. Crowd strike? I think that's what it's called. Cloud strike? Whatever it was. Microsoft tech breakdown. You know, the biggest tech failure in the history of the world. So all our flights got canceled and rescheduled, but I did get to see glaciers, which is something that has always been on my list, and they are really freaking cool. They're very much, you know how Carl Sagan has the whole concept of the pale blue dot when you like look at Earth from outer space, and it's just this little teeny tiny blip compared to the sun and the galaxies and everything? Well... The glaciers really gave me that sort of similar sense of perspective, but in a more sort of accessible way, just seeing how big they were and like realizing that these are just really huge pieces of ice and how quickly glaciers change compared to things like mountains um, and how quickly they're changing now because of climate change and all that jazz. So um, it was just a really interesting and really... Um, it was a worthwhile trip, despite the fact that I came home with influenza A, <laughs> and then I got pneumonia as a secondary infection. I know, it was wonderful. <laughs> so, um, I'm recovering from all that stuff. I might sound a little stuffed up. I'm all the way through my antibiotics, and I'm just walking pneumonia now, so I know that's all. No biggie, no big deal, just walking pneumonia. In terms of my working, um, I have been struggling to find a balance between my new corporate uh, work and doing my writing, but now that things are settling down a little, you know, our trip to Alaska is over, we don't have any more big trips planned except for my brother's wedding, which is not for a couple months, um, and I'm just really hoping things are going to settle down into more of a standardized routine, um, which would be really helpful. Um, because, um, then I can find ways to fit writing back into my life. So I am finalizing a couple freelance projects that I've just kind of been hanging on to ever since I, um, quit, um, being full-time freelancer. And then once I'm done with those, I'm going to dive back into my fantasy series. Um, mostly doing, uh, revisions at this point. I mean, I still have a lot of writing to do, but I'm like five books in and I've only published one. So I really want to kind of get back to the beginning and really, I feel like I'm too far ahead and I'm kind of stuck on the story. I need to go back, remind myself of the things that happened earlier, weave in some important details, you know, for later on, do that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that's going to be like a really kind of fulfilling way to explore Floor, that's the wrong word, um, <laughs> a, a really good way to kind of like keep my creative writing in my life while also working a corporate job and managing a farm, so fun stuff. I caught a bird yesterday, that was really cool, it was just like hanging out on the ground and it seemed like it couldn't fly, so I picked it up and then it flew away. <laughs> um, we're doing a lot, adding fencing, one of our goats was limping, so we have had to deal with that. She just had an accident. She's okay. It's just like a light sprain. She just needs a little bit of recovery time. That's all. Um, we're getting new barn cats to help take care of the rodent problem in the barn. So, and I love, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I love my farm chores. I know that sometimes they're going to seem overwhelming and it's just going to be a lot, but there's something really fulfilling about just doing like manual labor, especially when it's not like your full time thing. It's like, exercise I do on the weekends it's really valuable for me and my health it's also really valuable for the animals and it just feels like I'm accomplishing something very immediate um, and specific so I am very much enjoying doing that um, so yeah 
I think that my biggest thing that I've really been focusing on is figuring out the balance, you know, and I don't know, I kind of am under the opinion that um, balance is kind of a fake concept uh, or the way that we think about it. Like we think the way that I was taught to think about it is kind of like a static thing, right? It's like, if you're balanced, you know, X percentage of your life is doing this and X percentage of your life is doing this and you have it so that you never get stressed out and you get all the things done that you need to get done. But in reality, like, well, I guess this is particularly pertinent since the Olympics just happened. But in reality, like if you're on a balance beam or like you're doing physical balance, it isn't static in any way, shape or form. It's not actually, you never stop moving in order to maintain that balance. It's basically a series of constant movements even if you're trying to stand still you're making all these micro movements with your muscles in order to stay you know in one direction or like to stay upright and not fall and I think um, metaphorical balance is really similar it's not about being static or standing still it's about having the acceptance that you're going to have to make constant tweaks and changes um, as life passes as well as just being willing and open to making those changes and also being able to figure out which changes to make. So I'm in a sort of, it's kind of like when you first start riding a bike and you're like wobbling all the way back and forth and then the better you get, the more smooth it looks. You, you never, you never really stop moving. Right. But, um, I think I'm in that early stage of riding a bike with our new, like, lifestyle in our new house and the new corporate job where I'm like wobbling back and forth like crazy and just like I have a lot going on you know and so it's like it just feels like I'm being buffeted in every direction but every time I make a change I get a little bit more stable a little bit more steady and um I I really want to get to a point where I feel like I'm moving along smoothly um and that the changes I make are a little bit more, they have a little more finesse to them, you know, a little more fine tuning. So, um, applying that to writing when you're full time, like that's what I did for like years. It's like when I first started freelancing, it was the same thing. It was like, um, going back and forth between having way too much freelance work and no freelance work, figuring out how to manage money when I would have one month where I would make thousands and than other months when I make zero. <laughs> um, and as time moved on, I got better about managing my time. I got more motivated. I got more, I, I just figured out how to work with myself instead of working against myself. I figured out how to manage all of the different forces and variables. And now I'm basically back in that same place again, except this time I'm balancing a new house, a new state, a new corporate job, um, plus trying to figure out you know, how to blend the things that are really important to me, which are, you know, my writing, um, and with all the big, uh, things that are, are buffeting me around, so I don't really know, I don't really know how it's going to work out, I don't, um, I don't want to be in a full-time corporate position forever, um, you know, this is kind of, I don't know, I was feeling kind of dissatisfied with being a full-time writer. Um, Plus, because we got a new house, we figured the extra income will be useful. Um, Obviously, we bought the house without my income, so we could have managed and maintained it without it if we had to. Um, But it makes it a lot easier. Um, And so the plan right now is to just keep going until either it becomes unsustainable, like in the sense of, like, I'm miserable, like, I I have more stress and anxiety being at work than I think I'm getting paid to have, um, and that's kind of a subjective thing, obviously, um, or until we get to a financial state where I just can be a full-time farm manager and writer again, um, and with me working, that's going to be sooner than later, probably, but Um, I don't know, we're kind of hanging in, we're playing it by ear, I'm doing a lot of playing it by ear right now, so, um, anyway, that's my quick vlog update, um, I have had a bunch of ideas for things since moving into a corporate world, which, 
bodes well for a future writer, me. Um, I think maybe some humorous content might be my future, some corporate sci-fi. <laughs> Um, I have been working on another Chex Quest fan fiction because it's like low stakes. Just when I have a few minutes to write, like July Badger Camp, I did, I worked, I think I got like 12,000 words, um, on another fan fiction, Chex Quest fan fiction. Um, so I'm thinking fantasy and like lighthearted humor are definitely in my future that's just kind of where I feel like putting my time and energy so we'll see how everything goes you know life it just keeps changing you think it's going to be stable like there's this like I feel like there's this lie that life is stable and it just isn't it just always changes and like that's good and it's also bad like it's like annoying (laughs) because sometimes you just want things to be kind of stable but at the same time if you can accept constant changes it sure keeps life interesting anyway um that's all I have for right now I'll try to check in again sooner than later I've I know I've been bad about it so happy um beginning of hurricane season I hope everybody stays safe and at least somewhat dry and I forget what my sign off is again um Hi, kitty. You want to say hi? Come here. She's stepping on my headphones. Oh, hi. I've got two. Okay. Good girl. If you haven't met Rowan, she's... (laughs) She's 19. This is Potato. Wilfredo Potato. Wilfred, if you will. He's, um... He's more like 12, I think. These are my old, old kid cats. Okay, I'm going to sign off. Uh, we got to come up with a good one, Rowan, if you have any ideas. I think. Yeah, okay, good girl. Um, um, goodbye, Tsetse fly? <laughs> Why? Why did my brain do that? We will never know.